Have you ever heard of a chicken tractor? I hadn't till about a year ago and I started looking into some different ways to keep chickens and specifically a guy named uh, Joel Soliton and he has a method where he didn't invent this uh, but he just kind of made it popular but basically where you take your chicken coop and you put it on wheels and whether it's with a tractor or by your hands you pull it wherever you want your chickens to be located and then you surround it with poultry netting so um, or in our case we surround it with poultry netting because we're in a neighborhood so today I am going to be building a chicken tractor I have all of my lumber there and uh, I found a chicken tractor that I liked on Craigslist contacted them and as it turns out they had sold it already so I was pretty disappointed but uh, I, I liked it so much that I asked them to send me pictures and I'm gonna replicate what they did so it's gonna be a 12 by 7 or sorry it's gonna be a 12 by 6 rectangle and it's gonna have um, PVC arches uh, with purloin in the middle and then it's gonna be covered on the front and the back by poultry netting and on the top by a tarp so let's get started on this so the first thing we're going to do is we're just laying out the sides these are the 12 foot side rails and what's going to happen is they're going to have a foot overhang on the rear that's what these lines are for so that'll overhang on the rear because those are going to have wheels on the inside of them so you're going to be two wheels in the rear and then on the front it's going to overhang about six inches where the line is there and there's just going to be a hole drilled in the center and a rope connected from side to side and that'll be how we pull that'll be our kind of that'll be our tow rope so to speak um, where we pull the chicken tractor around the yard all the baseboards the boards that are going to be touching the ground are cedar um, I chose to do cedar because I didn't want uh, green wood or treated wood uh, in the chicken coop just because it's that wood is just filled with chemicals formaldehyde and other chemicals and so I opted um, to use cedar instead it's a little bit more expensive but uh, it'll be worth it in the long run so uh, this is cedar board and so I'm gonna uh, cut these boards to six feet and we'll go ahead and drill them in and get our square all done So that's how it'll be set, foot in the rear, six inches on the front. Alright, so the next thing I'm doing is just putting these gussets on here. This is just extra bracing so that my joinery in the bottom, especially since I'm going to be lifting this up and moving it a bunch, uh, this is going to be really strong. So uh, I am putting these gussets on here and then we'll do the top part. All right, there is the frame all done. Uh, the sides are about two feet tall. So I just made, made the sides two feet tall and uh, you know, it's pretty basic framing here. And I am about, I'm about to construct the door. Uh, one thing I did do was I said that this length right here was gonna be six inches. I had to 
go back and make that a full 12 inches a foot on either side even though I don't need that much space to install the pull rope or the tow rope uh, I, I remembered as I was doing it that most tarps aren't going to come in that length and the standard size for a tarp is going to be about 10 feet so I need the roof to be 10 feet so I had to scrunch everything back in so the total width is 10 feet uh, by 6 feet so uh, that'll help me when I'm installing the tarp at the end so I'm going to start go ahead and start doing the door. And for the door, I'm, I'm just using, because I don't have any spare hands out here, I'm just using a support, uh, the uh, grip here with two two by four scrap pieces and uh, smash them together to help uh, maintain the rigidity of, of the wood while I screw it in. And I'm gonna toenail this in. This has gotta be flush because this is where the door is going but I am gonna have a connecting piece from right here to right here, which will help strengthen the door frame a little bit. And I'm doing a standard size door, so 32 inches by 80 inches. Put that toenailed in. Now we will cut a little piece, the 18 inches. Alright, got the door posts in, now I'm going to do the top part of the frame, but I had to reinforce back here. It just wasn't strong enough because I toenailed, I toenailed there and I toenailed to the bottom uh, baseboard and so I had to come back and install just little two foot links to really bolster that edge of the door. I know once everything's in and secured it's going to be a little bit stronger i just wanted to do that extra little bit of uh, bolstering there on the bottom so i'm gonna put my top door posts in and then i don't know we'll see i, I think i'm gonna be done for the day it's burning hot out here it's like uh, 85 degrees starting to get way hotter out here the humidity's picked up and if you know anything about humidity in the midwest it's pretty brutal so um i am going to Put this top door post in and possibly be done for the day we'll see all right and there is the full door frame it's a little bit wobbly uh, but remember there's gonna be from here all the way up into the peak and over there is going to be uh, some support arches that's gonna be our roof it's going to basically be made of, uh, of PVC and it's going to have, uh, we're going to have four arches and a purloin down the middle so that'll bolster it up a little bit. So that'll be, this will be attached to the arches so it will bolster the front of the framing up a little bit. And you know, if we need to go back and add some support uh, boards uh, on an angle, we can go, we can always do that too. So. Uh, that might be it for me today. I'm gonna clean this mess up and the next uh, shot of this video will be tomorrow. All right, day two of the chicken tractor. And I made some progress last night. I ended up working a little bit longer. Let me show you. So in the original idea for this, basically I saw this chicken tractor on Craigslist and uh, so I'm copying the exact uh, picture of what I saw and then having to improvise because I don't know the details of the build basically. So they used uh, steel tubing and they had a pipe bender. So that's how they were able to use that. Well, I don't have a pipe bender, so I was gonna use PVC. Here on the ground is the PVC I bought. I did it, I got a 90 to do the top and then I got 45s to do the sides. 
So it's kind of like the roof of a house, right? And um, well, I was thinking about it as I was going to sleep last night and I thought, wow, that's, what if I just bent the PVC into a hoop, kind of like a greenhouse? And then I was, woke up this morning, I was thinking about it and I was looking out the back window and we have uh, cattle panels. These things that you see behind me, they're 20 bucks, about 20 bucks at Tractor Supply. And uh, they're 50 inches by, I think 16 feet, I think is what it is. Um, so I thought, why don't I just put those on there? I don't have to do anything. Don't have to go through the trouble of trying to figure out how to secure the PVC down. And so that's what I did. I'm just using these cattle panels. They're pretty rigid. And then for the top purloin, I'm using a piece of 10 foot uh, conduit. Making this 10 feet is super important because every length you're gonna find in conduit, PVC, all of that stuff is gonna come in 10 foot lengths. And so uh, I want one complete purloin. So I used uh, uh, just a metal piece of conduit and I'm gonna secure that in the center at the top between the two cattle panels to kind of uh, secure everything together a little bit better. So let me show you what I did with the cattle panels. I just took a piece of one by and smashed the edge of the cattle panel onto the end of the two by four and it holds really well. Just smash that together and um looks like it's gonna work out well i did that side now i'm gonna show you how i'm doing it by finishing up securing this side all i'll do is take my piece of one by cut it 50 inches which is the width of the cattle panel and uh just uh start some screws on each end uh, because i'm the only one holding this it's a little bit hard so I need to start as much stuff as I can before I lift it up. And then I just take a quick grip and I'll quick grip it to hold it in place and then screw it in. So it feels like this. And this stuff is pretty rigid, so it's not the easiest to work with. Hold it there, secure it in its place by smashing the quick grip down. And that will at least preliminarily hold it to where I want it. And then come back with the one by now I'll remove the quick grip it's gonna fall a little bit at least I got one side where I want it knock it in just like that I'll put some more screws in along here that's just to get secured down and that's how it's gonna look. Obviously with the tarp over it. We're gonna have a center gap, but we're gonna we were gonna have gaps anyway with the um, PVC method. Uh, so I don't think that's gonna matter much. And we're gonna have that purloin in the middle so it'll help hold the tarp up. Here's what we're doing for uh the wheels so we're putting wheels on the back so that we can easily move this thing so i'm gonna go five inches in and then an inch and a half wait an inch and three quarters sorry so that's where we want our hole right there i got five eighths inch bolts. This is the hardware for the wheels. I, I found these wheels at the hardware store for uh, for 10 bucks. It's just hard, hard plastic. Uh, it's got a bearing in the middle, that's important. Um, and then, so what we're doing is, I got a five eighths inch bolt, hex bolt. And so the, um, the washer goes on, goes through the wheel. And then on the other side, we put another washer and then it goes through the wood right there, another washer, and then we secure it on like so. And hopefully that'll be sufficient uh, for what we need to, to roll it. So uh, it's important to note that there's an inside and an outside on these wheels. The, the insides protrudes a little bit further so that you can fit the wheel on there and it's not rubbing against the wood. So let's go ahead and drill this hole.
There we go. Just use some boards here to support the structure. Lift it up. Roll through. Put our other washer on. Through like so. Washer on the other side. Let me just secure it down, hand tighten it. I looked for some wing nuts. Uh, they did not have any at the store. So this is all just gonna be hand tightened. Where it's flowing freely here, rolling freely. All right, day three chicken tractor actually we're not calling it a chicken tractor <clears throat> we are calling it a chicken wagon and the reason for that is because we live in the Midwest you know we got the uh, what is it the Santa Fe trail out here covered wagon trail this my friends is a covered wagon if I've ever seen one look at that Got the wheels. Well, I'm sure they had bigger wheels than that, but that is a covered wagon. So, I've done a bunch of stuff since I last started filming. I gotta bust this thing out because I have, we got market tomorrow, I got stuff I need to harvest, uh, I need to pack and get ready, and so um, I worked the latter part of the day in getting this stuff done. So, I got the, um, tarp on yep. and I found this tarp at again my local hardware store which is Menards and this tarp is like $16 it's a 10 by 20 it actually fits perfectly the next step is we are going to f I'm gonna show you how I'm putting this poultry netting on this stuff is kind of a pain to put on but you know it's just part of the part of the build Part of what you need because you don't want any uh, you don't want any rodents getting in your chicken coop They will destroy your chickens all I'm doing for the poultry netting because You know, it's being secured to these cattle panel edges I'm just using little zip ties like that and That seems to be sufficient for what we need I'm gonna put these last little back pieces on and then we will be done with the build and that is it three days chicken wagon is done what we're gonna do next is let me show you around the whole thing I'll do a walk around so you got the wheels down here and basically what those do is make it so that you can move it and as you can see there's a gap right under here when you got the wheels on when the when the chicken wagon is in the spot that it's going to be for a little while um, then we'll take those wheels off and it'll sit flat on the ground so that nothing can burrow up underneath it so um, and then we have the tarp so then on the front uh, we just have our door a little latch so nothing can bust in there and then we have our rope on the front and uh, basically this this front is interchangeable so the the diameter of hole the diameter of hole that the rope is going through is the same diameter as the wheel so we can put the wheels in the front or the back and the rope is basically just so you can pick it up and I'll show you here so all you do is lift it up the rope and walk it back it, it's decently heavy uh, because it's so big it's gonna hold a lot of chickens, so that's a plus. Um, also, when you move these chicken tractors, you're only moving it like, you know, 10 feet the length of the tractor itself, because all you're doing is giving the chickens a new area to graze in. So, and that only happens, you know, we'll do it probably once a week. We'll move it 10 feet forward, and then we'll just go in a zigzag pattern across the lawn and it'll fertilize the get lawn and it'll give the chickens new um, areas to graze so let's go ahead and grab the chickens we'll grab the poultry netting and we will set up their new area on the hill over here
All right, that didn't work. Sometimes heavy equipment is not always the answer. Plan B, call Adam McKee. We're gonna lift it. Now we're gonna get the chickens and move them to their new home up the hill. They should. Oh, it's all over. Excuse me, Grandpa. Hold on. Shut them in there just in case. They want to come to the it is the week after the chicken wagon build and I wanted to take you for a little tour of it. If you remember in a previous video, we uh, installed the electrical fencing down near the barn over here. Well, the electrical fencing now resides around the chicken wagon and this was its original purpose. Um, I'll link that video right here in the corner of the screen. So you can check that video out. Um, but this was its original purpose to uh, be a barrier around the chicken wagon. The reason for that is because it's on a solar energizer. So it's all wireless and we can just move it forward as we move the chicken tractor forward. So that's a huge help. So that's what we have around, around it. And we can shift it as needed. So right here is where we come in and out. So we just shut the uh, energizer off. And then you just, you can, you can pick these things up pretty easily. They just come right out of the ground. You can just stab it back in the ground behind yourself and that's it. So, the chicks are doing good. Let me take you for a little shot of this chicken wagon. I ended up putting... Uh, their nesting boxes on the right side in the center because that was the best area for them to not get wet during the rain and I'm gonna be taking this cage out of here this is strictly just for the chicks right now thank you Bruce Bruce is our rooster over there so the gist of it is every week I'm gonna lift this rope up right here and I am going to pull the whole chicken tractor back about 10 feet this way towards the front of the property and i am going to shift the fence along with it that'll that'll give the chickens a continual new grazing ground to where they can feed on new bugs um, eat new grass that type of stuff and it'll also uh, give the grass a break right here in the main area so we don't continually destroy the grass as we go along so i'm probably going to move them every week or so because they do a number on the grass. I'll show you what they've done so far. As you can see, these are pine shavings uh, on the ground right there, but they've already kind of destroyed the grass right there. I say destroyed, but really they fertilized the grass right there, so it's gonna be nice fertile ground. And as we move them forward, the grass will come back and hopefully be better than it was. So we're fertilizing the ground as we move them forward. We'll just continue to shift them all over the yard um, as we go along here. I'm super happy with the final result. Um, I haven't had any problem with the cats getting over here, bothering the chicks or anything, uh, because the cats are scared of the electrical fencing. Foxes we have up on the hill over here, they haven't even gone near it, because again, the electrical fencing is what really does it. So I'm really satisfied by the final result, how it turned out. And I'm excited because now we have our barn back. And so I'm in the process of cleaning out the barn to get it ready to store some tools and back in working order so that we can really utilize it for the market garden. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Remember, if you like these, give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to our channel by hitting the subscribe button. And if you want to get notified of future updates when we release videos, remember to hit that notification bell next to the subscribe button. Really enjoyed this build. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. And I will catch y'all in the next video. See you later.